This is War Stories, a cybersecurity podcast where we extract the best stories from the field of penetration testing. Your host is Zach Davis, experienced cyber and physical security tester. War Stories is brought to you by Cyber Coffee, engineered and roasted to keep you hacking the planet all day and night. Give it a try at drinkcybercoffee.com and use promo code WAR10 to save 10%. Enjoy the show. Well, welcome to another episode of War Stories, the podcast which is powered by Cyber Coffee. If you're a hacker and you're not drinking Cyber Coffee, what are you doing? Dave, you drinking uh, Cyber Coffee yet? You know what? I mean, I don't know why I haven't been drinking Cyber Coffee this whole time, to be honest. We're sending you home with a bag so you can give it a try. <laughs> what a lucky boy I am. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> uh, I love me some coffee, man. I'm uh, quite a coffee snob. So Everybody is. I'm here for yeah. it. <laughs> awesome. So... Today, we've got a very special guest, Dave Catling, owner and operator of Phoenix Ops and one of my favorite people in the whole world. Thanks for being here, Dave. It's my pleasure, man. Thanks for bringing me up and doing this. Like, I'm, I'm super stoked to get to do this with you guys. We're glad to have you. Um, so you know the format. Who are you? How'd you get here? What do you do today? Uh, lay it on us. All right, cool. Yeah, so um, like a lot of guys and uh, gals in this industry, you know, it's definitely a non-conventional path. Uh, that I took to get here, you know, um, like my whole life, I've always been super fascinated by computers in general. My cousin had an Apple II C when we were little and, you know, with the big, you know, five and a half inch floppies. And um, I remember back then um, there was this program that actually like uh, showed you a cross section of the computer, oh, you know, wow. and like taught you about how it worked. And like we would play all the games and stuff and it was great. But when I saw that, it just, something just clicked. So it like was showing you like what the the motherboard and the hard drive yeah. and like the memory slots and all that kind of stuff. It was like exact the exact machine you were using, but it was just like uh, you know it it opened it up and it showed you like you know CPU, RAM, ROM because ROM was a thing back then, sure. right? Um, and I remember it was just something about it was so interesting to me, you know. So fast forward a couple of years later, and my dear sweet parents, uh, Thelma and Earl Catling, went out to Comp USA <laughs> and bought a compact Presario. Desktop I remember machine. that. I don't that think either of those companies are still around. I don't now. think so. I know no. that CompUSA definitely no, they're long gone. Years. Like went with Circuit City or something. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. But um so they got that and then it just took off from there, you know. Like it came a little like Windows 95, and I was just fascinated by, you know, changing just the colors on the windows. And, you know, I eventually got more and more curious. And like one time I got so curious, I deleted the system 32 folder. To see what would happen, and you can kind of guess how that turned out. I actually don't remember it. I don't remember how we ended up fixing that. Um, but you know, it, but that curiosity was there, right? So, in terms of like you know, hacking and security stuff, um, years later, uh, I met a guy named John Sabin, who was a good buddy of mine, and. This kid, I think we were like eleven or twelve. This dude could just tell a story, man. He could make any topic crazy fascinating. So one day he brings up like hacking, you know, I think the movie hackers had come out like, you know, at some sure. point, like reason to that. And of course it's not a real representation of what it's like. It's a great movie. Though. Yeah. Oh, it's fantastic. Yeah, yeah. If you kind of, you know, <laughs> just, you know, let it be what it is. It's right? fun. Yeah. yeah. But uh, he was talking about real world stuff and he'd mentioned that, you know, he'd met some people who were teaching him some techniques and stuff. And he ended up mentioning, I remember, I remember specifically uh, uh, John the Ripper, JTR, Oh, the really? password cracking a binary. Yeah. So after that, I ended up going home and I got on the, the you know, this, this desktop we had and I actually found the binary. And, you know, back then I had no idea what Linux was. So I tried to run it and obviously it didn't work on the Windows machine, but sure. it still was just so fascinating to me. I'm just like, this is so crazy cool. Unfortunately, I didn't really do much with it from there. I didn't really know where to go. Um, but uh, they, you know, that kind of factors in, right? So you know, I, I go through my thing, you know, go to college, get my, you know, like go for my liberal arts degree. Um, I didn't really do much with IT up until that point, you know. Um, and I just kind of pussed around for a while, uh, <laughs> you know. Um, I actually ended up uh, quitting before I finished the degree that the first time, you know, I started when I was 18. Yeah, I did a little um, of that too. Yeah. Sometimes it takes a couple missteps to get back into it. Yeah, it does, yeah. But eventually you went... Drexel? Yeah, yeah that's right. I was trying to remember. Yeah, because you were a co-op at Pertivity. That's exactly right. That's what happened. Yeah, so the same cousin who had the Apple IIc, she went there for her uh, information sciences degree. Okay. And I'm like, well, let me 
try this out. Let me give it a try. And you're like, why didn't I think about this? Let me go back. So I'm 27 years old. I go back to college, uh, you know, and I enroll, you know, starting the IT program. And uh, this is where my story that kind of starts syncing up with a lot of the 7X crew. Um, so I got a job at the help desk at Drexel, and that's where I met uh, Mr. Eric Buck. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. So Buck we hasn't were... been on yet, but he's coming. <laughs> oh, so Buck is our uh, director of penetration testing services or offensive security services. Yes. So. Yeah. 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 So that he so you met Buck then. first. Okay. Yeah. Strangely enough, yeah. We were working the help desk together, and one day he comes to me, and in that, you know, Eric Buck style of, uh, you know, speaking, you know, he says, you know, David, uh, I just finished a co-op with a consulting firm here in the area doing uh, cybersecurity work. And when he said that to me, the word cybersecurity mentioned it was like an actual job and like a potential field. I'm like, all those memories of the things that I just talked about, like the, the, the sure. Apple computer, the, talking about hacking with, you know, all this stuff. It's like, oh, ding, 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 ding. You know, this, is, this, this might be it. So sure enough, you know, I sign up, you know, I go into the interviews and everything with ProTivity. And I, after I got done with that, I was like, there's no way this is going to happen. Like, you know, whatever, it was worth a shot, but I got the call. Well, and this is where our, our stories cross paths because I, when I had gotten a job at Protivity, I don't know if you were in the middle of your co-op or it was just starting because I started like, so it would have been like January 1st of like 2015 is when yeah. I started there. I think you may have already been there. I might have been September of 2015 I started. I don't remember specifically. I remember you being there on my first day. Oh, okay. So then maybe it was 2014. Then. Yeah. So yeah. maybe you'd been there for a couple of months. Yeah, maybe I should have researched that. It's all I've researched nah, my own past. That's nah, okay. <laughs> I'm trying. Well, I just remember walking in the, the Protivity Lab. That was such a, became such a huge part of my life for a few years. And first day walking in the lab, I think like you and Suki and Bradbury, that was the first day I met yes. him. I think, you know, Jude and Mike were probably in there somewhere too. Yeah, yeah, was, all uh, those guys. Yeah. It, yeah. Was, it was great, man. Yeah. Bradbury too. So, um, it's kind of cool how it worked out because I ended up doing my first ever pen test with uh, Bradbury. You know, we did an external together, and then I, we and I did my first ever internal on site with you. I remember that one. Yes. Yeah, drove up to North Jersey. <laughs> yeah, and, yeah, pouring rain in your yeah, Subaru. My yeah, Subaru. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, what a great time, man! Yeah, good stuff. But, um, but so that was the be that was really where the whole thing for me and security started. You know, I walk into this this lab of productivity with all of these people who are just brilliant, you know, you know, they say, you know, if you're in, if you're the, if you're the smartest person in the room, you're in the wrong room. Well, I was definitely in the right room because the everybody same, there to me was just so extraordinary. Like not only in the technical skills, which obviously were super sharp, but socially too, like these people could work with clients, like, you know, and you know how it was, you know, like we start doing all these tests together and, you know, we, we go through that sort of shared strife and you like just make these bonds with people. And, uh, that six month, you know, co-op, you know, internship, whatever you want to call it was like one of the most expansive parts of my life, you know, and I made so many great friends and, you know, like I have this passion for it, right? Like it's just, it's, it's, it's it was just this incredible thing. A lot of security people can relate like that. <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of first jobs where you're all, you know, stuck together and you're learning the ropes and productivity was special just because of that windowless room and we were all jammed in <laughs> there. Poor Jody was stuck with us, but we'll have to have oh, Jody yeah. on here at some point too. Oh, but, you uh, gotta get Jody. She has on. some stories. Yeah. Um, now we did have a window. It was just drawn onto the whiteboard yeah, in this that. little broom closet that we shared. Right. Yeah. But you know, from there, um, you know, we had our time of productivity and it was great. I learned a ton of stuff. And then, um, I had an old boss approach me, said, Hey, you know, maybe, you know, you're doing this for a while now and you maybe want to start your own business. With, with like, you know, me and my crew. And I'm like, wow, that sounds terrifying. So of course I'm going to throw myself face first into it. Right. Yeah. So we did that. We ran that business for a while. Um, eventually, you know, like things kind of went, you know, separate ways or whatever. And then that's when I started Phoenix Ops. So this was the first time where I was really running the show from beginning to end. Um, and thankfully thus far, it's been a success, you know? So it was definitely like a, you know, roundabout way of getting into the career field, but you know, here we are. Well, uh, question number two, what's, uh, what's your favorite tool? So yeah, hard question to answer because there's hard. so many great ones, but, uh, actually in a recent engagement, um, I was using, um, uh, uh, evil gen X. Okay. Uh, what's it? Version three now, I think. Right. So it's been a while since I've used it. Yeah. yeah it's it so working pretty well these days. Oh uh, yeah. Well, well, th th that's the funny thing about it. Like one of my favorite things about this tool is that, you know, you've really got to, dig into the code and you've got to understand not only how it works because you know it's got 
couple little canaries and things in there that you got to watch out for if you want to try to evade defensive controls, right? Yeah. Um, but, you know, of course, like, you know, the tool itself, it's used for bypassing multi-factor auth, right? So it will, you know, take your target page and clone it, and it will basically proxy um, user login information, and the, you know, the MFA code, and then it will pass that over, right? I think everybody probably knows this. I don't know. No, go through it. Um, There's probably people who don't. <laughs> so, yeah. So it's you'd use it with, like, a phishing attack. So, mm-hmm. you know, for all the, the, the non-security people out there, if you send a phishing email, um, that's why you got to check the URLs before you click on anything and just, in general, be aware of what you click on. But you'll send, uh, you'll be sent to the attacker's website where Evil Engine X is basically proxying you know, it's it's like a pane of glass in a window showing the actual website, but you're sniffing all the traffic in between. So when you put your username and password and then that MFA code, the proxy captures all that, forward it forward it's onto the actual website, gets the authentication uh, information and gives it to Dave. Right, exactly. It comes back to you, right? But the cool thing about that is in order for it to work, you've really got to understand how the page you're cloning works and how the authentication works, right? You've got to understand it in order to be able to pull that session information, right? And for me, it's just one of these things where, you know, you hear all the time and we talk about it all the time in the industry where you got to know what your tools are doing if you're going to use them. And 100%. this is kind of one of those things where like, you know, you've got to not only know the tool itself, but you have to know what you're working with in order to make, you know, it happen. Sure. So for me, it's just like, uh, you know, super like educational and it's just, you know, it's, it's sort of reassuring as well to kind of, you know, use that and have that success, right? And like, oh, wow. Knowing like, you can reverse engineer a website and figure out how to make it work. Right, yeah, exactly, sure. exactly. So for me, that was like one of those cool things, you know, it's not something you can just plug and play, you know, and, you know, it's, it, it takes that effort. And when you do get it to work, it's like, oh, all right, sick, this is great. Yeah. You know? like it's, it's a reward. I feel like a real hacker. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah to some extent, right? Yeah, yeah. good stuff. <laughs> Sweet. Um, so uh, what what story you got for us? Is it gonna be a physical one, network one? What do you <sighs> what do you got? The audience loves the physical stories the best, but I won't put you on the spot. <laughs> yeah, I mean, one of my favorite stories in my career is the first physical I ever did, which ended up being successful. Um, you know, getting into that building and you know being able to get in, you know, plug a box in, do what we got to do, and then get out and not get caught. Like yeah, like that that was great. Um, you know, I, I, like I was trying to choose between so many stories to tell there was that, um, you know, uh, the first test where you, uh, you know, we got domain admin with somebody who we had all taught together on mm-hmm. site, like, you know, seeing them get to experience that. Oh, sure, enjoy the yeah, yeah, exactly. Like that was one of the great moments, but I think I have to say one of my favorites thus far, uh, was actually a phone phishing, uh, campaign that I did a phishing campaign. Um, so it was a pretty straight up. Uh, you know, uh, a phone phishing engagement, right? You know, we're going to call a few of the employees there and say, hey, you know, this is, you know, Bob from the help desk, right? It looks like we're seeing some strange traffic from your computer. Um, Have you had any issues with your machine? Um, You know, uh, okay, well, um, in order for us to monitor you, we need you to change your password to this value. And we're going to watch your account for a day. If you don't hear back, go ahead and change it back. It's fine. So this is kind of the campaign that I'd gone with, you know, relatively, you know, it's not super advanced, but you know, it, it works surprisingly. Still works a lot of times, yeah. Uh, now, on this engagement, it didn't work for me at all. People, like, were pretty suspect from the gate. Which, a little hostile. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Which, which is great. I mean, you know, when you look at it from that uh, perspective of a consultant, like, you want your clients to do good, but you also kind of really want to, you know. Yeah, that's go always in the, there the, and do your thing. the weird thing about being a security consultant is obviously, like, the whole, the whole goal is to make the client more secure. You want them to win, but I think it's just human nature when you're, you know, up against somebody like you want to win too. Yeah. And it becomes adversarial. Sometimes you got to take a step back and like, okay, no, <laughs> I didn't get in. That's a good thing. They're doing what they're supposed to, but yeah, anyway. that, that hurts. Yeah, yeah. But it's true. Right. Um, but no, I think it's also good to have that, you know, sort of, you know, I guess, hacker mentality, right? Like you want to be into it. You want to try mm-hmm. and, you know, emulate or simulate, you know, these like attackers as well as you can. So, um, yeah, pretty disappointing. I hadn't gotten very far with that engagement. Um, but another piece uh, that was part of the scope was to call their help desk and see if you could, you know, fish them through, you know, whatever scenario. That one's hot right now. I think there was a few big hacks in the news 
recently where help desks have been getting targeted. Yeah, definitely. And, and I'll tell you what, like I can, I can definitely see why, right. You know, especially if you have third parties coming in and doing help desk services for you. Sure. Um, so, uh, you know, I, so to do that part, you know, after I'd done the original calls, I'm like, all right, let's do this. So I did some research on the organization and I found somebody who, um, like an employee who I thought maybe wouldn't have had as much contact with the help desk, you know, a lower risk of them knowing who this person actually was, sure. you know? So I picked the person out, you know, got the information and I call up the you know, help desk and I said, you know, Hey, uh, <laughs> you know, my name's so-and-so. Um, and right before the call, I had this thought, I'm like, now wait, I've already made several calls to these employees already. Oh, There's a chance that somebody nice knows that this is happening. Yeah. So I'm like, I have this idea. This is so stupid. It might actually work. So when I called, you know, I said, Hey, my name's so-and-so. Um, I just got a call from somebody saying that my computer had weird traffic and they wanted me to change my password. And like, I I'm really nervous, man. Like, you know, I went through, I changed the password. I did everything that they asked and all, um, you know, and, and, and after I hung up, I realized like, wait, something's, something's not right. So I'm basically selling this <laughs> to this yeah. help desk employee. Right. Um, you know, and, um, like acting real nervous, trying to get that sort of impetus, right. That sense of urgency yeah. in this help desk employee. So, um, you know, from there, uh, they were actually pretty sympathetic and they were like, oh yeah, sure. We can do that for you. No problem. Uh, you know, we just need your employee ID. And I'm like, oh, okay. Um, so in the moment I'm like, oh, like, oh what do I do? Like, oh crap. So I just, uh, Randomly, I thought, I'm like, okay, oh, you know what? My, my, my badge is out in the car. You know, let me go grab it, you know, and get that for you. I don't remember it offhand, blah, 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 blah. Let me call you back in a little bit. The guy's like, yeah, sure, no problem, whatever. So I get off the phone. And I'm thinking at this time, I'm like, okay, how do I find this? Like, you know, what am I going to do here, right? Like, I don't even know what the actual convention is yeah. for these numbers. So I, like, search Google. I'm looking for stuff. I'm trying to, like, recon it out of the internet. And, like, you no, know, no dice. So, again, I had another moment where <laughs> I said, oh, wait, I have an idea that's so stupid it might actually work. <laughs> so I cleared this plan with the client, you know, and uh, I actually ended up calling the person who I was impersonating to the help desk. So it's like this crazy, you know. You're making I, like multiple different scenarios. You're making phone calls. Pre pretty much, yeah. I'm doing like a ton of stuff. That's the kind the of stuff time. that like the scammers do these days though, so. Yeah, that's the thing, right? And you know, it's obviously we have to stay within a certain scope and a certain, you know, range of stuff. But, you know, I thought about it. I'm like, okay, what if I actually just call the actual person and see if I can get their code, right? I guess I cleared it with the client, you know, called the guy up, you know, super pleasant, you know, like, hey, how you doing? So I said to the guy, <laughs> So I had already gotten off the phone with the help desk and now I'm speaking to the person who I had impersonated. And I said, um, Hey, you know, uh, we just got a call <laughs> from the help desk saying, you know, somebody uh, called and said that they were you and that you were, uh, you know, like trying to reset your password, blah, 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 blah. So I basically Use flipped that the script again. like yeah. twice. It's, it's almost hard to explain because like, it's so silly and crazy. But sure enough, you know, like, you know, I'm talking and, you know, we go through it. And I said, um, hey, just so we know it's you, can you give me your employee ID? Uh, sure enough, it's da 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 Cool. All right. Cool. So hang up, you know. And I'm like, wow, that worked. Yeah. Okay. So sure enough, call back the desk. I'm like, hey, sorry. You know, I had to go and do all this stuff, blah, 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 blah. I got the number. It's this. Sure enough. Okay, great. Uh, here we go. Uh, do you, what, what do you want me to change the, uh, password to? And oh, <laughs> I man. was like, you know, and I was kind of like, oh man, I don't know. Like, you know, what do I do? You know, do you have any suggestions? Blah, blah, blah. So sure enough, you know, they suggested something, uh, they changed it and you know, I hang up and I'm like super stoked. I'm like, oh my, like did this actually work? So I go and try and log in on my desktop machine and no dice. I'm like, oh wait, did, did they know? Did they just string me along this whole time? But it turns out it was just like conditional access. So, oh, okay. so I had did it on, but... I had everything and it was right. So I ended up using my mobile device to try and log in and that ended up working. So oh, wow. sure so enough, locked, I'm in. It was locked down to whatever their devices were. But if you went on mobile, then you could get yeah. in. Yeah. Like the desktops need to have a certificate or, you know, some configuration like that. But you could get, you could hit it there through you the go, mobile people app, right? configure your conditional access. <laughs> it's going to stop Dave. <laughs> So, um, yeah, so that was like 
one of those things where like if, after it was done and I was finished with the, you know, the whole thing, I'm like, well, I really can't believe that worked. So I'm like super stoked, right? I'm hey, like, you're oh, rolling with the man. punches. Like that's one of my favorite things about doing social engineering engagements is sometimes really weird situations just present themselves. And like the quicker you react to it, or sometimes just your gut reaction coming up with some lie. I think Sarah, uh, Matt's, um, <laughs> Matt's sister was on a couple episodes ago and she said, I did just like my brother taught me and I died with the lie. And I thought it's so funny, but it's kind of the same thing where it's just like you keep rolling, you know, you keep rolling with whatever they throw at you. And if you act, you know, something might work out. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, so that was great. So for a whole five minutes, I get to celebrate. I'm like, this is one of the coolest things I've done. This is awesome. Like, ah, oh, you know, the whole slam, right? I get a call. Few minutes later, uh -oh. <laughs> from the client, uh, saying that uh, yeah, the guy who you impersonated called pretty much every department at the organization reporting what happened, and they also called local PD. What? Yeah. Jeez. So uh, I went from being like completely elated <laughs> to being like, oh god. Oh. Okay. Now, thankfully, everything turned out like, you know, in the end, like it all worked out. It all got explained and figured out and, like everything was, you know, cool and all, um, you know, so, but the thing about it is that, you know, it, it did still work, right? It did still happen. You know, we get that access and everything. And, um, you know, that was kind of a funny caveat to it. But uh, for me, that was just, um, you know, such a cool kind of culmination of everything that I've learned, you know, along the way from guys like, you know, you and like, and, uh, and like Bradbury and like everybody, you know, like that, again, that, that team of like crazy smart people back in fertility, right? Like it was so cool to see that all kind of come together, you know? Yeah. It's that cool fashion. that we've all kind of stayed together over the years too. And, you know, still get to the opportunity to work together is pretty awesome. Yeah. All right, Dave. Well, uh, tell people how to get a hold of you, how to find Phoenix. Yeah, definitely. So um, the website is phoenixops.io. Um, you know, this pretty much it's got a basic listing of the uh, services and everything. And uh, you can either contact me through the uh, email address on there, uh, or uh, I can be reached at dave.catling, C-A-T-L-I-N-G, uh, at phoenixops.io. Fantastic. And uh, once again, if you want to get in touch with uh, myself, got questions, comments, you know, anything... Uh, from the podcast, you want to be on the podcast if you're a hacker, uh, it's war stories at 7x.com, and that'll come right to me. Um, Dave, thanks so much for being here. Thanks for coming to hang out today. It's great to see you as always, and uh, we'll see you guys next time. Thanks.